Okay, so we are now being recorded. Uh, not yet. Give it. A, it's still turning. I heard the chime on this end, so. It oh, seems really? Good. Yep. It's, okay. Yeah. So, this is being recorded and will be posted online. And Nick, take it away. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, first thing, first uh, next meeting, uh, we currently have that scheduled for two weeks from today, April the 23rd, um, at the same time and place. Um, any concerns with that at all? Any conflicts? Otherwise, we will go with that for now. Um, so in the uh, uh, agenda document that was shared out, there's a list of issues that we're going to go through. Um, there's quite a big list. I don't know how many we'll actually get through today, but might as well just go steady on through them if we can. Um, the first thing that we we're going to start out with was long tasks. Um, and we're actually going to start out with long task issue number 75, I think, today. So this one is talking about top level browser, browsing contact scoping. Um, it was opened by NA last November, and I know, um, uh, Nicholas, you've uh, had some feedback into it. It did sound like, um, like I said, a high level. Uh, the question is, why are we using uh, top-level browsing contacts as opposed to the uh, document that is actually ex executing um, the tasks? And Nicholas, it sounded like um, after some back and forth, we were thinking that there was um, an easy change to the spec, possibly. Um, to um, update uh, which document we're talking about. I don't know if there's any more discussion that need to be had there or if it's just a matter of uh, actually uh, shooting those uh, updates into the spec when we get time. Um, I don't remember. I think it was just requiring the update. OK. Um, Yo, do we have think, a? Oh, go ahead. I think I wanted to make sure that we we may have a, another similar issue in in some of our other specification. I just I think so. If we find making the change, it's a change we have to make on on a few specifications. Okay. Uh, do you happen to remember if there's a particular one offhand you want to take a look at, Philippe, or? Mm, not off the top of my head. Okay. But I'll uh, if I find some, I will link them to that particular issue. OK, I'll add a note into the uh, issue right now, just saying that we should uh, take a general look at other ones, uh, just so we remember to do that. And then if you know of anything offhand, if you could post it there, that'd be great. Um, you have a quick question for labeling issues and stuff like this that we've, uh, you know, we've, we think the discussion is understood, but we just need to make edits. Are there like particular labels that we would use on an issue to um, um. mark it as like, hey, we just need to actually get the time to do this kind of work? We could probably create one. So I don't think we have any convention across the board that we can you know, probably create a just work and a label that, um, yeah. Oh, so OK. I think I see the problem. Um, the, the issue is that we want to report long tasks for all the browsing contexts that are sharing the same process. And I think that's what we do now. So that's why we passed the top level browsing contexts. Um, does that make sense? That is what Chrome does today in practice. Yeah, yeah I think so. Uh, so basically, we want to like, is a browsing context uh, the right um, like? If I remember correctly, so we want to send the long task to like basically all the agents in the agent cluster. If I think that's the like the equivalent terminology in the agent email spec, right? Or um, agent cluster? I don't know. 
I, I think I think that's the HTML version of all the basically all the documents that share an event loop all belong to the same agent cluster. There. So we probably want to somehow reference. It, it, it says that an agent cluster is a maximum set of agents that communicate by operating on shared memory. Yeah, so basically they're in the same process. OK. And, and share an event loop as well, I believe. Um, is that something that needs to be defined in the HTML spec, such a core concept? It, it is defined in the HTML spec. Yeah, but it's actually in ECMA. But... Hmm? Oh, it, it, it's in ECMA? OK. Yeah. Mm, OK. So, OK, um, I guess the first question is whether it's still reasonable to surface long tasks from uh, any browsing context in the browsing context that shares the process with that one. Does that make, make sense? Can you repeat that? Uh, so if you have multiple top level browsing contexts in the same agent cluster, um, is it okay to report long tasks from one in the other? Okay. Um. Are you talking about the simple scenario of like uh, top level context and an iframe in that, and whether or not they'd be able to to share it, or is what's the? Yeah, that that's is whether you would be able to share it, and then. So top level context and a same origin iframe would, but the cross origin iframe wouldn't. Right. Or like I'm guessing we don't wanna like in architectures that have cross origin renders like cross origin documents in the same process, we wouldn't want to expose it, right? Right. Um and then the question is in cases where they are isolated, can we expose that? And I think the answer is yes. But um, and are we talking about actually exposing the actual long task event itself, or some other aspect of it? Yeah, the long tasks. Okay, so we're. Today, you can get long tasks for all cross origin, same origin, et cetera, iframes. And the question is whether or not that should be acceptable going forward. Um, you can only get them if they share the process. Sure, sure. Yep. But yes. Um, so, the, I mean, I guess the main problem is that tasks don't really have, as far as I know, they don't really have a. Attribution. Oh no, they do have a task as a document. Okay. Uh, so, in any case, there was the other concern that his uh, Anna said that a browsing context can encompass multiple processes. So, I guess we shouldn't be talking about documents. Because I don't know why a browsing context can have multiple processes, but certainly that's not what we intend to expose. So. so when you talk about processes, you're talking about a process in the operating system? Yeah, a pro like a process in, yes, in a user agent. So for multi-threaded architecture, that would be the case that a browsing context would share several processes. Is the style engine is running on one? No? Not much. I mean, 
threads are not the same as processes, but in any case, um, I'm, I guess what I mean is the event loop with a single document shouldn't be multi-threaded or like multi-process as far as I know. Like yeah. you can't split JavaScript from a same mm -hmm. document too. Yeah, so, so a document is a single process uh, at the, the release, but um, maybe what Anna was referring to was some place in the teardown or like during navigation where you have a browsing context that still holds the previous document in one process and then the future document in another process. Right. Maybe that was when like something that Anna referred to. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be solved by just referring to the document. So we should just do that. Um, I guess the question still remains regarding the other part. Um, whether we just report, when we call report long tasks, do we basically report every task to every document in the event loop? Uh, or we try to not report some tasks to some documents? Um, and are you uh, asking that question because there have been other outside uh, security or privacy concerns around that kind of sharing or more just in the context of the complexity from oh, what we're no, talking about um, here? I mean, just curious, since we're going to change that part, might as well know what people think about how we're changing it. Uh, I haven't really heard security issues from that because but mainly because the attribution is so terrible that I guess it's really hard to exploit, um, I think. Um, so Ben, I don't know if you have opinions on that front from, you know, in a perspective of a different implementation that has different architecture than Chromium. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I would like to see this clarified here. Um, I is I guess the question is: Are we? I, I'm not conf I don't know. I'm confused about like how is this useful if if we're reporting <clears throat> on multiple processes, is that? Um, not, not reporting multiple processes. It's more like reporting every long task in the process, as opposed to say, if you have multiple origins hosted in the same process, then uh, only reporting some of the tasks to one of the origins. Uh, so, so in the example, if you have two origins and in the same process, then all of the long tasks are reported to both of the origins. The, the difference, of course, is uh, how the attribution of the long task is reported. Uh, so when there are security concerns with saying where it's coming from, I think the attribution just says it's unknown. So you don't need know if the long task comes from the browser, if it comes from uh, the cross origin frame, if that makes sense. So, uh, so th I think the it's is there possible to report it for the process because that is a, is a signal of how busy the the process is. But um, um, so if in that case, 
where there's multiple origins in this single process, then you would be able to restrict it to just single origin with cores or? Um, well, it wouldn't be with cores. There, there's, there are some uh, isolated context proposals uh, which I'm not super familiar with, but that would help uh, documents to be isolated within their own process, I think. But it's not a thing nowadays so much. Oh, we do have side isolation. That's So basically, today, like the concrete examples, you can have, um, you know, multiple sites, like multiple origins on the same site. So let's say um, google.com and Google Docs uh, both run in the same process. One of them has many long tasks, but those long tasks uh, influence both. So right now, they are reported to both. I don't know what we're doing. Like, I'm guessing we're not doing the same kind of reporting on Android, uh, where different sites can be can find themselves in the same process. Um, and but um, and Yolda, is that the case if if that is that only the case if one is embedding the other, or if, if the, you just have like two tabs open? You you have two tabs open. They get distributed to the same process if they are same site. I see. Okay. Don't realize that. Um, so that's currently the way that the spec defined it. Um, there may be like uh, reliance here on site isolation that um, is not necessarily realistic. Um, so maybe we want to define that in terms of isolated contacts, but I don't know if this is, this would necessarily be helpful because you could have, um, I guess, Maybe where, there are, where is that isolated context defined? Um, so it's a current proposal. If you heard of, uh, there is the cross origin and better policy, uh, cross origin resource policy, and cross origin opener policy. Opener policy. Thank you. They're um, all very confusing. Yes. Uh, yeah. So the naming could be better, uh, but. Um, these all like basically enable us to have um, browsing contacts that cannot load anything um, either cross origin or cross site, depending on the definition. I don't remember if they have a cross site uh, bit, uh, but basically, you can say that uh, you know a context that cannot load anything that it not that is not explicitly opting out to be embedded and that is something that there are people planning to for example enable shared array buffers based on that uh, and other uh, uh, powerful features that enable um, um, you know uh, scary things in the context of uh, uh, cross origin leaks uh, and cross site leaks um, so maybe we should um, somehow see if we should layer long tasks on top of those concepts, but I don't know if that's uh, um, yeah, I don't know if that's in scope. Uh, and and each time at our origin has any right now we don't it has no relation at all with long task but in a world where we actually not allowing some origin to access the information or get the information rather would we want to have tao as well impacting the cpi 
Um, can you repeat that? The time allow origin header right now has no impact on long task. Right. Um, probably no. We don't want to link it to long tasks because, I mean, TAO is already pretty overloaded. Um, and long tasks is way different. It, it only makes sense for frames anyway. So I would think no. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's, um, it's something that you would want, uh, like isolated, con like if we would require an opt in here, isolated context make more sense for an opt in. Mm -hmm. Okay. OK, so I guess my suggestion will be to just go ahead with what I su suggested back then, which is to replace the browsing contexts with uh, docs, which is the documents that are affected. Um, and then we need to change the report long tasks algorithm to simplify it, because right now we're getting all the browsing contexts in that algorithm. So if it just receives the document already, then there's no need to do that. Um, um, yeah, and I I think it's maybe worthwhile to open another issue to think through what like this whole cross, um, like, you know, reporting inside the process and see how it works with, you know, in browsers that don't have site isolation and whether we want to tie that with isolated context. Right. Yeah, it looks like this is something we suddenly want to revisit. So, OK, so should I file a bug for that at some point? Yes, I think that's what you have was proposing. I, I don't see any current bug that captures what I was saying, so I'll just file a new one. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Sorry, it took a long time. We can move on. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Uh, mo moving on to the next issue, which is issue 75 out of long tasks. Sounds like another fun one that we may, we may want to discuss, which is the title is Event Loop Timing Reporting Seems to Ignore Reentrancy. Um, this is another one opened by uh, around the same time. Um, um, and I know it, that, this is 76, right? 76. And I know that, Nicholas, you had some comments with him back in November as well, um, where we're talking about how some uh, browsers may pause, I guess, some tasks to let other things execute. Um, yeah. So yeah, reentrancy is just complicated because it's basically saying that if you have a task that wants to do some work, it can just basically push that work and then pause the task and then keep running the event loop. And then once the work is done, re restart the task. And then like after that work that you were waiting for is done, and then the task end time would technically be super inflated because um, if you just look at the start and the end time, of course, it's going to count all the tasks that were run in between. Um, what I'm saying is that that's a bug in the HTML spec. There shouldn't be any task reentrancy. Um, it should just be. It should really be defined as separate tasks. But that's a whole other issue, I guess. <laughs> and was on his example, he said that Firefox has nested event loop for synchronous XHR. Is that like the example of a task that is allowed or is defined that could have? Be paused and continued. I guess I wasn't really understanding what you know. What are examples of this in practice? I'm not super sure about it. Um, I guess they probably 
cheat and do synchronous XHRA synchronously. So that's what he's saying. Um, because no one wants to do sync XHR. <laughs> ben, have you had a chance to review this issue before at all? Yeah, I'm looking. I think it's like JavaScript called asserts or JavaScript called alerts is the use case. OK. I'm not, I'm not sure I understand the use case, though. Is it because the work after alert is considered to be within the same task? Yes. Right. This, this, so, yeah, that, that is a problem. Um, it just means your tasks, your task length would be inflated if you have an alert. Yes. You need to wait for the user to dismiss the alert in order to continue your task. <laughs> um, so I, I guess I had the question there of if you had other work pending, would it be able to execute while the alert is showing to the user? No. No. And also, I'm not sure that it's a bad thing to discriminate against people using alerts. <laughs> well, if if the work is blocked, if other work is blocked from executing while the alert is showing to the user, then I think it's reasonable to just count all of that as part of the task length. Because the, the intent is to capture when the process is busy, right? And it cannot respond to user input or to new work that is being issued. So if during an alert, there's no possibility to do other work, then it seems reasonable to just count that as um, part of the task length. Does that make sense? That seems reasonable. I mean, that's what I would expect. OK. So in that case, we can just close the issue. Yay. <laughs> is there, uh, just thinking outside the box, is there any sort of like, um, you know, as we're thinking towards attribution or something, like some sort of flag that we would want to put on a task like that that had obviously gone out to the user or was waiting on user input? Um, so that somebody that's consuming these would know that it's not just you know script that's hard spinning or anything like that. Hmm. Yeah, good question. Um, and I, I think the alert use case is slightly different than the XHR use case here, but you know they're both because um, one of them is more dependent on user input. Right. It will only be for synchronous XHR, though. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sync XHR. Um, and I guess I would assume if anybody's using the prompt thing, it's similar as alert, if that's even still supported. <laughs> yeah, there is. It is, unfortunately. Yeah, there are a bunch of those. Yeah. Um, bunch of those prompt-like things. Um, but they are all equally discouraged. And yeah, and flagging them in long tasks makes sense. They should probably be, yeah, uh, in, in terms of attribution, I agree that um, you know blocking user input uh, um, gadgets are different from sync XHR. Although so both my proposal would be to wait until we have the, again, well, I know I always hunt everything to that, but until we have the JS uh, sampling profiler, because that will also so solve the use case, presumably. Because um, when you're alerting, presumably the alert will be in the call, call stack, right? Um, so in that case, you would easily be able to determine the tasks that are caused by something like that. Um, I like that. 
Nicholas. Sorry? I like that resolution. All right. So yeah, that way we avoid uh, solving that particular use case when we can just use a rocket launcher to solve many other use cases. Just um, it'll take a bit longer, but <laughs> seems like the right way to go. Yeah, uh, I agree. It just like maybe it makes sense to open a future issue that will remind us um, that you know alerts and sync XHR should be, you know. A special category in that, like when we would do attribution, but yeah, but overall it makes sense. All right. Um, anything else, or I think we got some good notes for that. So um, the last issue for long tasks in particular that I had uh, queued up today, uh, I know Ryusuke had opened it, but I don't think he's actually on the chat today. I think he wasn't able to make it. Um, so we could potentially skip it. Uh, but I, um, it says issue number 80, which is that the combination of paint timing and long tasks can expose precise paint timing. Um, and it was an issue, I think, originally opened in the paint timing uh, repo and then moved to the long task repo, but they're related. Um, Nicholas, I don't, didn't know again, sorry to keep on bringing this to you, but I know that you had commented on this a little bit. I don't know if there's anything that you wanted to chat about here today or if we should wait till Ryosuke is available right. for a call. Um, I guess my comment would be Chrome doesn't surface update the rendering long tasks. <laughs> Um, I am not sure uh, at this point if we should add them. They feel like a little bit different because update the rendering is essentially the browser work and exposing long update the rendering may just be better in something like uh, frame timing or any other throughput API instead of long tasks. So to me, it feels like perhaps we should just remove long tasks from there altogether. And in particular, that, that solves the concern <laughs> because we won't be having that at all. Because right now we report, to clarify, we report long tasks after the task ends um, in the event loop, and then we report again for the update the rendering step. So this issue is regarding that second time we would report, which we don't really implement in Chrome, at least. Um, and I think it's probably not uh, worth mixing the two together. We can revisit this problem if and when we implement um, frame throughput or whichever new animation smoothness API we, we come up with. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, it makes sense that like if we don't currently implement it, it makes sense to me to remove it. Um, Okay. <laughs> no, uh, anyone else thinks that um, rendering long tasks should be here rather than in the future, you know, frame timing or otherwise like different type of timing API? Wait, can you say that again? Um, so the issue here is related to uh, rendering long tasks, which Chrome doesn't currently expose. Um, and what Nicholas was saying is that it feels like something that should be exposed in a different API. So for example, the frame timing API and not as part of long tasks. Um, and simply removing the, them from the spec would resolve this issue. And then we can 
uh, potentially, like, I don't know if frame frame timing then would be subject to the same uh, concerns that Riosk is raising here, but we can probably mitigate them somehow by, I don't know, fuzzing it or, you know, rounding it. That makes sense. Then you are muted. What was the rationale for moving this from paint timing to long task? I just don't, I want to avoid the perception that we just keep refiling Rialski's bug, where that's the big thing. Uh, let me see. Oh, because the, I think I misunderstood the issue at the beginning and I thought it was only long tasks problem. Um, so that's why I said if you could file in long tasks, does that make sense? But yeah, cool. it's a, uh, I think it's more for long tasks issue in that his concern is with the timestamp that is being reported for, as the end of the update the rendering step from the long task API at least. Um, yeah, I guess so. Maybe I mean, basically, the issue is that pain timing, uh, as specified, exposes a start time for the update the rendering step, and long tasks um, rendering long tasks as specified but not as implemented would expose uh, the endpoint of that uh, step. So that exposes a precise time of the update the rendering st step, which uh, has potential sensitivity. Um, if we were to just expose that time explicitly as part of frame timing, uh, I'm guessing we would somehow mitigate uh, that risk by fuzzing that time or uh, just exposing extremely long ones. Well, presumably we would do something like expose timestamps similar to what you would get if you constantly were calling graph or something like that. Yeah. So that would be the kind of the mitigation. So because the frame throughput API, for, for frame, frame throughput, you don't really care about whether it takes a long time or not, but whether it's constantly updating or not, if that makes sense. Um, so, so that's why I think it's like the different use cases. So it should go in different APIs. Um, and in particular, 50 millisecond update the rendering would be preposterous, but also it's different. Like in most modern architectures, it's multi-threaded, and that happens in a separate thread, which means it's not blocking the same things as the long tasks are going to be blocking. Um, so yeah, I think um, it just requires completely different, like it's, it's a different use case. and. Uh, the granularity can be much slower than long tasks, but we need to be able to report shorter, shorter durations. So it's it's I think it's going to be very different. So one way of solving this would be to remove those. Um, long tasks. Another would be to remove the start point uh, measurement for pain timing and move it to somewhere later. So instead of defining it before the update rendering step, we can define it afterwards. Um, which is... We probably need Ryosuke for yeah. that. 
discussion. I agree with <laughs> him for the discussion. So um, for now, so I would suggest removing the long tasks since we don't really implement them or have any plan to implement them in the near future anyway. If we decide, oh, this actually ma makes sense, then we can just re-add them later. But at this point, it seems to be causing more confusion than anything else. So we we'll probably just remove it. And that will solve the issue since we won't have uh, those timestamps. Does that make sense? Well, it makes sense to me. OK. Um, there's another two issues in request title callback, both from your case. So I would suggest we punt on them until um, he's able to join. Um, that does bring back a paint timing issue, issue number 40, that I think we had talked about two weeks ago as well. I know, Yov, I think you added this back to the schedule. I don't know if there was more discussion that you wanted to sing up with on that. Um, today. So well, this is paint timing issue uh, number 40. I think I added it, but. OK. Yeah, so I added it because Noam sent a PR to solve this, which was basically saying um, do not fire FCP if you're backgrounded before FCP, which could be from being backgrounded from the start or from grounding very quickly right after navigation or many possible things, right? So I wanted to discuss that and say I probably would prefer if we instead go with a, a more holistic solution, which doesn't treat paint timing as so special. Um, and uh, the options are Page visibility, which requires some work, but will let you have like the full history of the visibility of a document. Or the other option would be just add a, a boolean or yeah, like a, a flag in the performance entry saying that this was backgrounded before the entry was created. Um, so I wanted to hear pe what people think about those options. So f <clears throat> from an analytics provider's perspective today, we um, like knowing this information of whether there has been any, um, uh, you know, what the state of the tab was. Like we do look at the visibility state in, in deciding whether or not to include paint this paint data in our like other uh, bigger bucket of data. Um, I think uh, if Philip had, I don't think he's actually on this call. I think he had actually a couple suggestions for um, ways of kind of exposing with, without necessarily changing whether this event gets fired of exposing for somebody that cared why or not they, um, uh, whether or not a, the time metric was affected by uh, the visibility state. Um, and that one sounds best to me because that can also kind of just give uh, each consumer of the data the choice and whether or not they want to um, take action based on, based on that. Um, and it also kind of also puts kind of front and center within, uh, like if we were to put this information on the performance entry itself, it could actually also highlight to the consumer of this data that they may want to know. It's an, it's an important aspect of this data as, as whether whether the, the context had been painted or sorry, had been visible at all. Um, so I kind of like that. It kind of uh, pushes the, the consumer of it to understand it a little bit better if there's data sitting in front of them about, it, about the state. Is it 
realistic. Um, yeah, I guess browsers could potentially know if you know visibility resulted in visibility changes resulted in throttling that could have impacted the metric or not, and yeah, then fire up that flag. So you're saying yeah. an even higher level flag, which isn't just visibility state, but whether the browser knows that the visibility state could have had an effect. Or anything Maybe. else that could have, like, I don't know, some something had an impact on this metric, which means that it was discriminated against in some way. I don't know. But <laughs> I would prefer if we broad. Start yeah. Speaking uh, like a very concrete way, in which this would be on or off. But <laughs> I would suggest that attribute would always be true, Yof. <laughs> Something yeah. could have had an effect on this metric. <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my my only concern with the the boolean or thing to the performance entry is that it's doesn't make sense for all the entries, like in user timing. Do you really care too much if you were backgrounded? Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. But <laughs> yeah. um, so you care if you were throttled. If you're measuring JavaScript, like user timing is basically measuring JavaScript runtime. Uh, uh, the time it took me from this operation to that operation can be significantly different if the thread, like if that was backgrounded or not because it impacts whether it was throttled or not. So you could mm -hmm. care about that, but not necessarily in all browsers. If I'm, you know, if I'm on desktop, maybe some browser doesn't throttle the backgrounded threads where other browsers do, and I don't know. It's complex. And the other um, proposal that Nicholas mentioned is um, making uh, page visibility more consumable, in um, especially in cases where, like, uh, analytic scripts load later on the page and don't have full visibility into the past. Um, and like I like that option as well because you know the, having that information about the page's full life cycle of its visibility state uh, would be very helpful for not only this but for other things as well. Um, but I think that would also require a little bit more work to to think through. Um, but I think that would be the kind of the alternate proposal, instead of putting this data directly in perform each performance entry, the consumer could also look at the intersection of that with visibility state events um, from uh, page visibility. Just, at the moment, it takes a bit of work to keep track of that visibility state. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be conceivable to just have a Boolean on the window that tells you it's been backgrounded at some point before? Because really, that's, just, that's the use case we're talking about here. And you want that information potentially late if your JavaScript doesn't get to load early. Um, and you might not get a chance to set up the observer and get, you know, reconstructing the history and doing it properly is is too complicated for what we're trying to do here, I think. Yeah, although the Boolean wouldn't work always because the performance entries are delivered asynchronously to the observer. and. Um, yep. The other thing is, if you use the buffered flag, then you might get them way later. Um, yeah, absolutely. So. I mean, I I still think that the flag on each entry is the best way to go, um, and just keeping it to visibility because that's the simplest way to reason about it. You know, whether visibility will have an impact on throttling in the future remains to be known, but just keep it simple. You know, I strongly agree with that. Just use visibility. OK. And um, so what are, so yeah, I, I also agree it's probably better to start with visibility. And if we see there are 
broader throttling issues than. But but that so visibility is currently supported. So mm, that, may, sometimes. <laughs> Yes, uh, but uh, we also, let's assume <laughs> that it's uh, not as buggy as it is. Um, we heard uh, feedback from Facebook, uh, for example, that it's not always enough because in some cases, the page is not visible before the JavaScript runs and then turns into visible, uh, but they cannot tell those cases apart because their script started running only, you know, after. It oh yeah, but that's that's the whole use case we're trying to address, right? Yes, if exactly. Had, so, if you had a boolean in the entry telling you whether this was hidden at any time point in time yeah. before the entry, then you would already know. Oh, or okay. Alternatively, so one way would be yes, mm -hmm. boolean on the entry. Um, another would be to surface. Uh, visibility change entries uh, that can be buffered mm -hmm. or some other way to, you know, tell a more concrete story on that front. Yeah, that, that's what I meant with buffered flag for page visibility. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, that's so yep. I, I misunderstood. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that would give everybody the most flexibility um, and it seems so, to line up pretty well with, you know, everything else that we're doing. Yeah, I guess the feedback I heard from some here was that I mean it's it would make it possible to compute the visibility checks. It just uh, makes it a little less easy because then you need to have like a history of visibility states and then mm -hmm. go through the timeline to check to find the intersections. Can, um, yeah. I don't think it would be too hard, but it, it just makes it a little less straightforward than having the Boolean on the entry. But at the same time, it just provides additional use cases potentially, right? Because you, well, I can't really think of use cases that. Yeah, that's the thing. Can you think of another use case to having that information? Like, it, it, it would be nice to have the buffer flag for page visibility, but then like the question is, what else people use it for? Right. Yeah. So, does anyone have a use case? <laughs> well, the the boolean that we're talking about uh, that would be on the entry that would be would that be a this has ever the page has ever been hidden or would it be the this entry was fired while the page was hidden? If it's the first, was it ever? My concern would be if we start looking into things in the future, like uh, you know, single page app interactions and stuff. You don't necessarily want a boolean to live forever as like this page at one time was hidden, and now you're you know 20 minutes later into interacting with your, your mail client, kind yeah, of limits you a little bit. Um, Sorry, <laughs> we're sitting. Yeah, no, whereas if you had like this log, obviously of of uh, state transitions, then you could look to see which ones were relevant for you within the time frame that you cared about. You know, the last uh, th three seconds before your interaction happened on the page, or you know, something like that. Um, just gives you a little more flexibility, I think, in that case. I think that's a good point. So SPNFs could be a use case for having the. Observer for visibility with buffering as opposed to the boolean in the entry. And obviously, we don't have like paint timing events right now for SPA cases, but you know we're thinking right. about that. But you can still like use user timing in SPAs. Right. Right. Yep. Exactly. Hmm. So yeah. how, how do we decide how to move forward <laughs> since we're running out of time now? Um, good question. I think it'd be worthwhile to review where the discussion was left with page visibility, at least to see if there were any other major concerns with having an observer for page visibility. 
um, that we had discussed. It looks like we last talked about it in 2017, so I'm sure things have changed. Um, well, there's already an event handler, so I suspect there's no security concerns from just exposing the ones that were before that. Right. <laughs> unless there's a security concern with that as well, and then we just have no page visibility at all. <laughs> uh, fair <laughs> enough. Um, why don't we try to pick up that, uh, at least that page visibility issue, maybe for the next discussion and make sure, like, yeah, make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and then we can ponder it a little as well from, uh, it, sounds like, it sounds like there are developers could want it either way, so I'm, I'm not sure if, um, you know, we we need to solicit a little bit more feedback, maybe, or, or what have you. Would it be reasonable to post in public web perf the mailing list to get more people to chime in? Maybe absolutely. Yeah. Post it there, and we can tweet about it, and and see if we can get other feedback. Yay, Twitter! <laughs> All right. All right, uh, any other questions before we close on for the day? No thoughts? OK. Thanks, everybody, for joining uh, two weeks from now. Same time, same channel. See everybody then. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Right, thank you. Bye.